like you said, I'm watching this sweep to go to sleep to. Yeah. And then Sulky wins a game like, oh, well, hey, way to save your pride, bro, whatever. And then another one, and another one. And she is giving birth to, like, within the last, like, weeks of giving birth. And I thought she was going to kill me <laughs> because I woke her up going, oh, oh, in, like, game six. And she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, Sulky's about to reverse sweep innovation. And she goes, oh, let's put it on the TV. <laughs> hey, SC Historian here. Today, I have a video that is unlike any other I've ever released. I typically focus on bringing you words from the greatest minds and voices that the StarCraft world has ever seen, and I pride myself on that. But when I met the Smith family at DreamHack Atlanta, it was so clear to me that they were the perfect encapsulation of the unsung heroes that this community contains. John, Leslie, Reagan, and Lincoln Smith may not be famous figures from our world, but what they are is a family that exemplifies all that is beautiful about this game. They learn, grow, bond, compete, and forgive together through StarCraft. Fans like them aren't just the lifeblood of this community, but they're the sort of family that produces the community figures of tomorrow. I hope you all enjoy a piece like this one that looks deep into what love for a game can mean. If you've been enjoying my work, be sure to get subscribed. If you really love what I do here, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. That said, let's jump in to my word with the Smith family. So uh, I'm here today with the uh, Smith family. Thank you guys so much for taking the time. I really appreciate it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Thank you for doing this. Of course. Yeah. So obviously, it's not a very customary piece for me. Generally speaking, it's, you know, like players or casters, community figures. Mm -hmm. But... As soon as I saw you guys, like, I don't know, it seemed like something really special to me. I, um, generally speaking, you know, if you turn back the clock a generation or two, parents are really repressive about video games, right? It was generally seen as something that shouldn't, they, parents didn't want their kids to be doing. It's a waste of time. And uh, obviously that's changed a lot, right? Now, mm -hmm. the people who grew up playing games are now adults um, and have families of their own. And beyond that, uh, there's all this uh, clinical research about the cognitive development of playing games like StarCraft, things that, that, that sort of you know, push you to do logic and problem solving. And it's not limited to StarCraft, but it's a good example of it. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we are definitely seeing a shift where people like Clem were introduced to StarCraft from their dad. Um, and that's sort of the same deal here. So who, who, who was the, the original genesis? Who got into StarCraft first out of the family? Okay. I did, yeah. How did that happen? Um... I was a big fan of Warcraft, and um, yeah, big fan of Warcraft. And at that time, pretty much anything Blizzard put out, I was going to go ahead and do the early order from Electronics Boutique. I think was the chain back then, and uh, yeah, and it it came out, and it had this weird bug thing on the front of it, and I didn't know what it was, but I was excited. And uh, yeah, I, I, I've I've never stopped playing StarCraft in one iteration <laughs> since then. And uh, uh, StarCraft Two came out, and it was great, and uh, I, some of my best memories, in fact, in, in a weird way, StarCraft II became a bigger part of my life because we'd been married for uh, just a year and a half, two years, and then got pregnant with our first, with Reagan, and um, and she, um, it was just this really weird time where we were listening to the GSL together. It was our first kid, and so you're nervous and you're worrying, and in this weird way, um, StarCraft became kind of almost like the playlist yeah. to like one of the most important times of our life. Um, when she was born, she would react by sound. She was very alert. If she heard mom's voice, instantly. If she heard my voice, instantly. Not grandma, not grandpa. But if she heard Tasteless's voice, because we had played so much GSL, she would up to the TV <laughs> because that's it just, unreal it had just been on right we were all like we were both like this is insane yeah it's just <laughs> she crazy. knows tasteless and artosis <laughs> then she knows her grandparents <laughs> to be fair he has a much he's a he's a more commanding voice than than, than Meemaw um, <laughs> but um, but then um, I, I don't really know how to I don't know how to put this but so for me like I didn't know that I didn't really know that esports was a thing. I didn't. I played Rude War. I played with my friends, and that was as far as it went. 
I discovered esports was a thing through StarCraft II. I discovered that people made music parody songs about video games. Yeah. By the way, yeah. this is just that I was behind the curve, but it means that this, this whole fresh new thing came with StarCraft II for me at the same time that our family was being formed. Mm -hmm. And then Lincoln came <laughs> along and uh, Reagan kind of liked to watch it, but Lincoln just jumped to it immediately. I mean, at four years old, he would sit there on my lap and we'd click around and mm -hmm. he, uh, yeah. Anyway, I'm sorry. That's probably way more than you were looking for. But no, it's just, no, you're good. I, um, uh, I I disagree with the contention that you were behind the times. The whole world wasn't really <laughs> familiar with it. If you didn't live in South Korea or you weren't one of the 12 people that were a competitive brute war player in America, right? You didn't know. Okay. Right. So uh, you know, StarCraft II is really what created the esports industry as we know it now. It's what brought esports to the West. Um, so I think your experience is actually mm -hmm. quite in line with many other people, including myself. Right. Um, but that's fantastic. Yeah, uh, one yeah. thing I think we skipped there was, okay, so mom, let's, yep. who, who are we? Name-wise, yeah, sorry. Uh, I'm Leslie Smith. <laughs> Leslie, uh -huh. and? Oh, uh, Jonathan Smith. Uh, Reagan Smith. Lincoln Smith. Fantastic. Yeah, and, um, uh, and she liked it too, by the way. I wasn't yeah. subjecting my poor pregnant no, that's, wife that's, to endless StarCraft. It was like actually. That's sort of my follow-up <laughs> question, but before that, like one thing is, so you were watching GSL, but not live, or you were watching it live? Some live. It's gonna be three o'clock in the morning for you yeah. guys, right? Yeah. 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 Well, it's it, hard to sleep when you're pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it gave us something to watch while we were. So uh, you weren't familiar with StarCraft, uh, you know, before StarCraft II. You started watching the GSL. What made you fall in love? I started. So I hadn't heard of it at all until he, he was talking about it as it was getting ready to release. So then he, um, I would just, just sit and watch him play the game. And then he started watching the professionals play and just the how fast their hands move, how fast they do these things is amazing to me. So I like that. And Tasteless and Artosis are absolutely hilarious. So it was fun to watch. It was mm -hmm. fun to get it, it. It was easy to get into because you're watching people who are making it fun to watch. So mm. that's awesome. Yeah. I think so many times. People like get really into it, they try to get their partner or spouse into it, and mm -hmm. it, it doesn't really pan out that way. But I think, uh, you know, especially the fact that, that you got into it as well, really, I think, created the makings for this StarCraft family dynamic, right? Yes. Like, mm -hmm. um, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we play at home all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll get a, all of us on a computer and it, our own computers and we'll play against each other, or it'll actually be the three of us against dad. <laughs> <laughs> it used to be. Okay? That's right. Yeah, he's, he's gotten, he's gotten much so much better over the. Yeah. It's it's insane how how fast he has progressed. Mm -hmm. um, and playing against playing against him, it was, um, <laughs> it's it was really hard playing against him at first. And then we all came up with strategies, and it was it was fun as a diet. It was a family thing that we could all do together. We all love doing it, and. Mm -hmm. That's that's a way that StarCraft has connected us together. As What's a the first strategy you did that you can remember working? <laughs> well, okay. This is, this, is a, this is a short list, so it shouldn't take long. <laughs> well, okay, this one. <laughs> this one is my favorite, and it was the first one that we did that I was oh so proud of. So all three of us on one side of the map, and he we, we, hit, we hit play, and we were all playing Zerg, I think. We all gathered up all of our drones and attacked him and killed him with our drones That's in the so first few seconds. That's so cheap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it was awful. And he said, and he came in, he said, he was just like, he was so mad. He walked in, he was like, no, <laughs> this is not allowed. You cannot do this again. I'm on that side here. <laughs> to, be, to be fair, I, I was like, okay, very clever. Congratulations. <laughs> yeah. Ground rule, no. Yeah. yeah. No, I mean it was fun, and but it was a joke. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, 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 no. My dad was so mad. He said, <laughs> "What? No, my dad was so mad that he said we're playing again, and we only had workers, and we thought we killed him, and he had another base on the other side of the map producing zealots, and yeah. he just came in and killed us." To be fair, it was I was playing Zerg. He's right. I was actually okay. I was saying when I did that again, I did say, but you can do it one more time. Do it one more time when I know it's coming. Yeah. And and I beat him. Yeah, you, you just like insta expanded at the beginning of the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 and that then, makes sense. And then I sent one drone and chased their, they chased me around and just, just bought time and yeah. then I beat him. I was like, 
Don't ever do it again. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. I, yeah. I I love that. Yeah. I, I love these like uh, unexplored feelings within the mm -hmm. uh, in the game, right? Like where mm -hmm. sure, like these things have been mapped out by the professionals and by the hardcores, mm -hmm. but you don't know that when you're a casual and you're just right. playing the game. You're just having fun. You're playing it as a game, mm -hmm. not as a sport. Which is what they turned it into, right? Right, right. Um, and and uh, that's that's a okay as well. Sure. Um, but yeah, I think I think that's such a fun, organic, uh, you know, way that people uh, you know learn to play the game. But yeah, no, it's really it's really cool to mm -hmm. sort of go through that together. Um, well, he, and to be and I gotta give him credit. So he's gotten good enough now, and we we play two v twos, and we did them versus computers for a long time, and we'd play. A medium and a hard, and then a hard, and we've worked it up, and now we're starting to play two v two versus people, and you know we we have our good streaks and bad streaks, but it's fun. Heck yeah, we, we have fun. Yeah. And okay, it's mostly fun, and then sometimes it's infuriating, and you lose three games in a row, and you're like, well, we're not going to install the game, but we're done for that. <laughs> we um, I I remember being when I was a kid, and I had StarCraft, so. It, it, it was so p much a part of my life that we started playing Heroes of the Storm, and I was like StarCraft with the little people. Yeah, yeah. Like the, horses, uh, with the little with, horses. With the little horses. StarCraft with the little horses. <laughs> because it was it was the same company, right. and I just associated right. the art style with StarCraft. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. so, that it's, yeah. That's super funny. Um, so when it comes to your guys' enjoyment of the professional side of things, um, who do we root for? Any particular, you know, teams, organizations, players that that mean something to any of you? Cyril. 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 Cyril, and, and now Clem. Yeah. Yeah. Be, be honest, Clem. For you, it's Clem. Right? Yes. Now. Yeah. Now. But it, it was Cyril because they were were, were rooting for Cyril. <laughs> so yeah. I was just yeah. kind of like, yeah. But now it's Cyril. But now now, now Clem. Your own guy. Yeah. yeah. Now I found my own person to yeah. root for. Clem is fantastic. Mm -hmm. Uh, Cyril recently, and then in my heart, Beyond and uh, Showtime for personal reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, Cyril, of course, uh, the Great White Hope, and, and uh, uh, on the Korean side, probably be Dark. Oh, nice! Oh, yeah. yeah, that's cool. Dark Love is one Dark. Of my yeah, yeah. yeah he, yeah. he he has very villain energy, but mm -hmm. yeah. I uh, but I do enjoy that. Everybody yeah. needs a good villain. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Dark. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah, for the longest time he had the reputation as like the Farner killer. That was like yep. a big storyline. I, I do remember him like saying that a lot and then eventually losing, like Cyril bopped him one series mm -hmm. and then in another tournament he was like, mm, I'm not, I'm, whatever, I'm not a Farner killer. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Um, yeah. But you know, you know, one thing I feel like I, I, I took away from, from playing a lot of StarCraft was uh, not caring about losing. Do you guys feel that way? Do you feel like you care? Don't, don't care about losing stuff? Um, no, <laughs> I, I, I do. I care <coughs> about losing stuff. Fair enough. But I, I get what you're saying. Yeah. Where it's it's either it's either all you that you won, or all them that they won, and you can be proud of them. You can be proud of yourself. Absolutely. I get very mad. <laughs> Let's be honest. But I usually just am like, okay, I'm gonna do better next time though. I'm gonna care, and I'm gonna be like. Well, I'm not done playing because I have to win first, duh. Like, yeah, I think, like, maybe the way I said that is not, like, the best way to put it. Like, of course, it's okay to care if you lose. I think what I mean is not letting your emotions get the best of you when you right. lose. Because when you play StarCraft, y you are conditioned to lose. Mm -hmm. if, like, if you keep playing, you're, like, even if you are literally one of the best players in the world, you're still pretty much going to lose half your games on the ladder. Right. And if you're truly the best in the world, maybe you'll win 65 or 70 percent of your games. So you're still going to lose a really significant number of games. Right. right. Um, which is, you know, it, it, it's different than a lot of other things. A lot of other games, you can get really good and you can master it and, and you can really dominate, especially in single player games and stuff like that. But even in some multiplayer games, there's not the skill ceiling, right, mm -hmm. that, that StarCraft has. So you really right. have to be comfortable with losing yes absolutely yeah, yeah. um there and was uh, go ahead i i think i think with him he has gotten a lot more comfortable with losing um because he'll he'll make a face and i can tell he's lost a game and then he goes right back into the next game he doesn't let it slow him down he wants to keep playing so he can keep yeah. getting better and winning it more right. that's awesome mm. we, we did have a conversation about three years ago I don't, do you remember this lincoln yeah 
So he came into my office. He'd been playing on his computer. He came in my office, and he basically said in so many words, and he was very upset, very upset. And he goes, I want to know how to un uninstall the game. I want to uninstall the game. I'm ter he, he was really angry. He yeah. was like, I'm, I'm terrible at this. I'm never going to get good at it. And I'm. And he was just upset. And for the record, I told him this at the time. I was like, I have felt every single thing you're saying right now. Nor I was like, were there dark, tar were there dark temple involved? No, but still, <laughs> we've all, you know, we've all been there. But the thing I did tell him, and I think, and I think it made a difference at some point because he didn't play StarCraft for a while. He took a break. But I told him, I said, here's part of the issue. You don't want to practice to win. You you want to play for fun, but then you want to win. Like you're paying you're playing the most competitive game in the world, I would say. Yeah. I mean in terms of just the highest skill ceiling. You're going to get matched against people, right? If you want to compete and win and see that improvement, you got to put in the work. You can't do a different build whatever you feel like at whatever moment. Just I don't know, see if you can make hearts with your probes in the middle of a match, whatever you're doing. And that's a little bit of exaggeration, but you, you can't practice to just do whatever, yeah. but then get upset if you don't get the results. Yeah. And at some point when he came back into it, he always liked, you can represent the, sh the shirt there, Loco. I mean, uh, uh, Loco is his favorite cat. Yeah. Morning. Simon is the best. I love Loco. That's his, yes. that's, that's his uh, morning coffee. Every morning, <laughs> yeah. morning with Loco. But he started really... He still plays for fun a lot, but he started really working on, okay, I'm going to start hot keying. I'm going to start doing this. And I think he's seen pretty steady progression. But yeah, you, you, I don't think you've ever gotten that mad. Have you, is that accurate? Have you ever gotten that mad again where you, you actually wanted to uninstall the game? No. I've only had that happen twice. Oh, okay. It was like, no, I was infuriated. I was like, oh, believe yeah. me, a lot of pro players literally uninstall the game sometimes. Yeah. So, uh... <laughs> Is that true? Yeah, I know it happens. I mean, obviously it's not a regular thing, but there's a lot of people who have gotten pretty mad and they uninstall the game, and of course they reinstall the game. Sure. But, <laughs> yeah. but yeah. Idra knows what we're talking about. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, poor Idra. Yeah. yeah. Can, you, <laughs> can you settle this? Have you spoken to Greg? Does he, is it Idra or Idra? Which one does he um, say it is? I believe he said Idra. Okay. Like, I, I'm not, I don't know Greg at all. I've never spoken to him. Okay. But, but, uh, but yeah, from what I understand, it, it is Idra, but like, you know, Idra is sort of the colloquial sure. thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it is Idra technically, though. Okay. okay. Um, I'm just yeah, yeah, yeah. He's still, I'm still going to say Idra. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, he's saying that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so, what, what was the what was the first strategy for you that like you know you feel like helped you start improving? The first strategy, I mean, my dad found a clean video on Pig, which I used. But the one that I created and I was the most proud of, and I was just happy, was I fooled them into thinking I was going in Blink Stalker, and then I would show up with like 50 charge lots, and kill them. Like Sick. it won like 50 games for me. I just won in a row. And I didn't lose, so that was like the thing. Like pushes would come, yeah. But I would warp in like three stalkers, and I could hold off a push, and then my charge would finish, and the game would be over. They would just give up. So yeah, I love that strategy. I, I wanted to say that's something I will just to the community. It it's that it was very challenging for a very long time. It's getting a little better, but it was for the amount of content that was out there for StarCraft and the amount of guides or this or that build it was really hard as a parent to find things that were mm. even remotely clean and i don't mean like i don't i'm talking about without just anyway so Don't that was something um yeah. maynard actually put out an introduction to starcraft that was 100 percent family friendly and it was like on purpose family yeah. friendly and i was able to get like three or four kids interested in starcraft because i could yeah. show them what it was without it being something that has that, that no parent could object to, yeah. and, and, and it was just really it would get frustrating a little bit as a parent, where, you know, you'd have great people who I love, big fan of, you know, you know, Pig and Loco and stuff. They would have these guides and a winner, and his no his live stream over on Twitch, his stuff he uploaded to YouTube is usually is usually clean, yeah. but his Twitch stuff was which was, okay. anyway, you're right. He's generally cleaner than others, but the, it's for monetization stuff as well on YouTube. We're like it, sure. Twitch, is, it happens a bit differently. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But um, uh, winner, uh, winner Starcraft, you mm -hmm. know, um, and just a lot of cursing on yes. there, which doesn't 
again, it doesn't lend itself to sharing with it, your children. It Correct. makes it hard, yeah. and then of course it's like it makes it hard to pass it on to the next generation. Anyway, just FYI. So for yeah. anyone who ever sees this, if you're doing this, if you have a family-friendly version or whatever, just know it can get shared that way. Mm -hmm. But also keep the adult content going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm an of adult. course, different strokes. Like, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Different, yeah. different groups. Yeah. One thing I'm interested in, you guys watch a lot of GSL together. Any any particular matches or finals or seasons that like really stand out in your memory as like special? <sighs> Lots of Nest Tea. Like Nest Tea was so awesome. Um, and just, the, it, for me, a lot of it is not one match or one, it, it's the thing that happened, you know, like with, with Nest T watching him what did he it was a the bailing bombs no it wasn't bailing bombs it was a uh, what was that what's the thing that spine crawler, spine crawler. he spine crawler rushed the, some somebody and ended the game immediately yeah 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 and watching that and watch and listening to tasteless and artosis just lose their minds, yeah. yep. and it was amazing. Nesty has a 20,000 IQ. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 We're, we're all living yeah. in, in Nesty's mind. Yes. Yeah, it's, yes. it's, it's, yes. yeah, yeah. Yeah, exactly. I, that was one of my favorite yeah. moments. Oh, that was. For us. Uh -huh. yeah. Do you have um, a favorite moment? When Quinn did it. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> Yes, when Clem beat Solar just a few minutes ago. <laughs> that's a, yes. yeah, that's, yeah, that's my favorite yeah, Starcraft Starcraft history is still being made, um, why not? But, um, uh, Dark, listening, I really think it was listening to them get so, as a little kid, listening to them go insane when Dark would do something. Um, so I think that just those moments. That guy's a killer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. For me, the big moment, I don't know, but it was like a big tournament. Um, Rainer knocking Sarah out and then immediately losing to Dark. Like, <laughs> you knock Sarah out. He's like, no, 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 I don't even want to be here. I just want to make sure Sarah doesn't win. <laughs> That's my entire goal. Cheeky, cheeky, Rainer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, he did it a couple of times. Yeah. Yeah. Um, in a weird... I, I could, I'm having trouble narrowing it down, so I'll just... There was something magical that will never be replicated about watching Fruit Dealer. Yeah. I don't know what I don't, I don't know what it is. There's something about that, and part it's of just it the too. First one, it, it's, yeah, it's that, one. and it's the thing is like I, I didn't know the context at the time, but I mean him just getting up there and just he had been such a stone cold killer the whole thing yeah. when he, except when he was breaking bananas and stuff. And then he just up there and he's crying and he's just so overjoyed. And of course, I figure out later, well, he'd been he'd put in all those hours as a pro yeah. in Brood War and hadn't really gotten anywhere. Yeah. And now suddenly he's a world champion and a top. It, okay, there was more context, but that was really special. And I we loved Nesty, but you know we were we were there. I I think it would have been just as special if we hadn't been there. But watching Cyril do it that oh, whole run, guess. 2018 BlizzCon, and just watching it and that moment where he goes up on Classic, and then Classic takes a game, and it's like, oh no, it, no, 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 is this the heartbreak? You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. and it's just, and then, and, and him closing that out, and hearing, um, I can still, I, I mean, to the point that I, it, would, it would be close to a quote. I can hear uh, Tasteless screaming, Artosis, I think it's happening, and, and Artosis going, going, We've waited all this time, and I didn't, and I, and I still don't think I'm ready. I, I just, I just, I'm like in that moment, and that was just the energy in the room. <sighs> the energy in the room at BlizzCon was outstanding. Yeah. It was the most uh -huh. amazing thing I think I've ever yeah. felt because you could feel it. You could feel everyone in there going, "Okay, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen." Yep. And then just the eruption when it yeah. did happen, everybody losing their minds. It was amazing. But, and I, don't, but I want to say, in defense of people that weren't there, like I'm not trying to say, well, if you watched on stream, then you didn't get the real experience. No. Because I'm going to tell you something. When I watched in the qualifiers of the previous year, 2017, and I, we watched Neeb um, go in there and get knocked out in the first round, have an amazing game, and then Rogue figured him out, and I think it might have been Solar. Rogue, it was too, yeah. too, too, too Zerg. It seemed like they talked because the next day they came and just bopped him, bopped him. He's out after he, you know, swept the. Uh, watching that, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't watch the rest of BlizzCon because I, I watched it later on. Fun, I just couldn't. I was too 
so yeah, there's nothing there's nothing like being there, but don't ever let anyone tell you that if you're watching on VOD, you didn't really experience oh, yeah, it. Oh, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah, no. yeah, man. Yeah. There's so many. There's so many. Yeah. There's yeah. so many memories. It's just... Yeah. What about you? Hmm. That's a tough one. I mean, okay, so being there for Oliveira's victory was obviously very special. Oh, yeah. I also have... I mean, that'll be a special place in my heart forever. Like, I, I took the picture. That's like his Liquipedia picture now. So that, that was like... That's cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was really special for me. Like, I, I, uh, I was definitely really, really proud of that. Um... Oh, what I, I can tell you my biggest heartbreak was Jadong in the uh, 2013 uh, Global Finals versus SOS, where he, where SOS cannon rushed him like four consecutive games, and it was this. Before that, it was this miracle yeah. run where he knocked out Maru in the quarterfinals and then Deer in the semifinals, yeah. and you know it was also after this whole year of him being you know Silver Surfer Kong getting second place and all these things, and yeah. and you know it looked like it was finally gonna happen. And he beat Deer with that with that incredible unborrow play, mm -hmm. uh, where like you know I, I, I like what you say like some of these I remember, yeah, some I of these sound about. bites that get stuck in my mind like the uh, day nine and tasteless cast of that series together of uh, Jadong versus Deer and there's this awesome moment where like day nine came out with something along the lines of like like uh, like the, when everything's on the line the star sense is with Jadong. Um, and, and he turns it around with this incredible um, a burrow play, and uh, and yeah, he just and Deer was just coming off of a, a, a WCS, uh, basically a GSL victory, mm -hmm. so he, he was you know heavily favored, and uh, the crowd just erupted, and uh, you know this this Jadong chant, and, and he just looked so triumphant. It, it, it felt like the true return of the tyrant from from Brood War, and. And then SOS just went LOL and destroyed him in the finals. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I got really upset about that, I, I will say. Um, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, but uh, so, the, so the, it absolutely is just a million and one. Oh, oh the, the uh, Innovation versus Sulky uh, 2013 uh, GSL finals with the reverse sweep. Uh, yes, yes. Yes. So I went to sleep after Innovation went up 3-0 because it was like 5:30 in the morning or six o'clock in the morning. I was super pissed. Like I was like, this is gonna be another crappy GSL finals because there were yep. so many bad yeah. GSL finals. Yep. yep. And I was like, this is gonna be another one. And I woke up the next day and the number one post on Reddit Starcraft had like 2,000 upvotes. Congratulations to the GSL winner. And I was like, wow, people are that excited for the 4-0. I opened it and a sulky one. And I was like, no, I can't yes. believe I went to sleep. <laughs> yeah. And, so, yeah. Listen, I'm I'm gonna admit, I did not watch a lot of live. That was in a period where I didn't watch a lot of live. I watched the next time. Sure, sure, sure. I just had a bout of. We had a second. He was born then, right? He was. He was uh, what rolling up on. He was actually a baby, baby. Yeah. And I, for whatever reason, no, I know what reason. I had a little bit of insomnia. Started watching it, and like you said, I'm watching this sweep to go to sleep to. Yeah. And then. Sulky wins a game, like, oh, well, hey, way to save your pride, bro, whatever. And then another one, and another one. And she is giving birth to, like, within the last, like, weeks of giving birth. And I thought she was going to kill me <laughs> because I woke her up going, oh, oh, in like, game six. And she's like, what are you doing? And I was like, Sulky's about to reverse sweep innovation. And she goes, oh, let's put it on the TV. <laughs> Yes, and that's, that's what I knew I married the right woman. <laughs> the, the, two kids, like the two kids were breadcrumbs, but that was the genuine <laughs> house. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no, I uh, I remember they, they showed this this shot of, of, of Sulky's mom just ecstatic, crying. She's tears streaming down her face. She's banging the dongers together. Yeah. And, like, it was... It was a really special moment. Yeah, that stands out as one of my favorite moments in history. Oh, and we all, I gotta be, I, I, am I speaking for all of us? We did not care about Oliveira at all. Didn't care about him winning. We thought that was just like, okay, whatever. In fact, I think we were disappointed. Uh, who did he beat? Uh, he beat um, Maru. Maru. Uh, we Rainer, we, Hero, Maru, in a row. Yeah, we were disappointed. We, we wanted him to lose to each of those people. Yeah, yeah. Didn't care. <laughs> And we're and I'm literally I was like, well, that's a disappointment. And then he gets up there and starts talking. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then by the end of it, we're all crying. Have we're tears in our eyes. <laughs> we're all in it. And I'm like, I'm so Not glad one. he won. <laughs> and we all, you know, like we we were like we've been really from the whole time until now when he's playing Cyril and they're tied one one. And I mean, Oliveira, you already got your stop. Um, 
but you know, but truthfully, like that, like that, that's I'll remember that forever. A guy who I was annoyed that he had beaten all these players I liked, yeah. and then he got up there and just spoke from the heart, and I was just yeah. delighted, awesome. delighted he won. Yeah. It's it's incredible moments like that where yeah. you, you realize that the game is so much more than a game, or or at least it can be. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So just in the interest of catching that awesome series, sure. yep. um, I think the, the final final real question I have for you guys, and I want each you to just answer separately. Yep. What does StarCraft mean to you? It means, like, it means it's brought my family together. It's a game that it's fun. It's um, a game that's helped me get over things. Um, it's, it's helped me and my dad, like, we'll have arguments, but then we'll play StarCraft, and it's a lot. Um, it will make it a lot better. So... It just helps with uh, family. It's also helped me notice whenever I'm an idiot. So, <laughs> like, whenever I cheese my mom and then she's super mad, I'm like, okay, this is what you can do better. <laughs> okay, that's an idiotic moment. He'll spend all day saying, mom, let's play, let's play, let's play, talk her into it, and then cheese her out in five minutes, even though he is, like, infinitely better than her. And I'm like, this is so counterproductive. Um, for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then make that face. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Um, for me, StarCraft is my childhood. <laughs> um, that's what I grew up on. I grew up on Blizzard, StarCraft, and um, I'm really excited for Stormgate. <laughs> um, so, yeah, my childhood, definitely. That's what StarCraft is too. Uh, I mean, for me, it, it took me to my childhood back there, but I, it's it's weird because again, I was totally into Brood War. I love Brood War, and. It means nothing compared to StarCraft II, because StarCraft II for us has been this. Like, it's just been the backdrop. Um, and it's just, I, I, I will say it's been the most consistently good thing uh, outside of faith and family. I think it's been the most consistently good thing in my life for the last decade. I love yeah. that. Yeah, I agree. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's special to me because it's, he and I, he and I shared it um, in the beginning of our relationship. You know, it it was very special bringing us together. Um, and then watch. I, I love to watch the two of them play. My son and and Jonathan. They. Um, it, it's fun to watch them get into their debates about what they should be doing. And, and then him having to realize that dad actually knows what he's talking about. <laughs> <laughs> and then he gets, you know, yeah. he's learned. It's a learning and That's a life lesson in and of itself. Yeah, but it's, it's, a, it's a great thing for, for us, for family time together. It's, it's, you know, the old board game family, family game night. We have those too, but we also have our StarCraft game nights as well. So it's, it's, it's a lot of joy brought into our home by StarCraft too. I think I think that perfect perfectly encapsulates the reason I wanted to talk to you guys. Um, thank you so much for for taking the time. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Another special moment when um, I watched a logo video and I thought Ghosts were OP, and it was like Dark versus Mario or something. <laughs> and they would and he clumped up all his units and all his ghosts, and the one infester grabbed one and Ian peed all the others, and that was just like he did it. Finally, it's over. <laughs> the ghost train is over. Yes. You got to watch the Hardison series. Is it Imba or, or do I suck? It's Imba. Yeah, I've seen that. I've seen those. Is it Imba or do I suck? Yeah, um, and I will also say, man, just for whatever it's worth, the people like Tempo, we talked about Day9, Tempo, mm -hmm. Loco, mm -hmm. um, yeah, Nerd, Alert. Nerd Alert, back in the day, Husky. <laughs> I mean, yeah. that's the other thing, too, is this scene, there's so much joy outside of the games. The game itself is so much joy. And then to the point that she made, that, my, that Leslie made, which is true, the casters, you will never know, people who are casting and people who are streaming, the people who do interviews, the people who add thickness and... and yes, it, it, It's just... It's what takes it from being a game that you play and then you set down to something that you take with you and you think about. And like you said, Day 9 Dailies that has some application for life and going for it. And it's just all the creators out there that, if I'm being honest, don't get... It's almost like, well, you got your views. That was your pay. They don't really get the thanks, you know? Yeah. They're, they're, they're always thinking the... 
everyone's always thinking Blizzard and always thinking that. But man, for the people that are still here, you know, we're on year 12 of playing a dead game, which is quite an accomplishment. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. You know, I love that so much. And um, it, it doesn't happen without people creating so much content. And we appreciate you. All. I, yeah, uh, it, yeah. Yeah. So uh, with 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 tempo, I I I was I was I was surprised that. A, a video game could have music that was attached to it. Like StarCraft music is a thing. And that that's something that I also love about StarCraft is that it has a music genre. Because <laughs> I, I love music and that's that's another way that I connect to it. And so yeah. I love that so much. Mm -hmm. All right. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think that about does it for us. Okay. I awesome. uh, I so so much appreciate your yeah. time. Thank you. I uh, let's get back and watch some awesome matches. Awesome. Right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks so much for watching. If you enjoy this one, be sure to leave a like and a comment down below. Get subscribed so you don't miss out on future releases like this one. If you really enjoy what I do here, consider supporting me on Patreon. The link is in the video description. That's all for now, my friends. Until next time.